Hey everyone, long time no see. Welcome to our second segment of our Japanese Flower Festival. Amy Balsters of The Floral Coach is going to be showcasing various centerpiece styles, bouquets, and personal flowers featuring our Japanese flowers. She will explain her strategies when it comes to planning and designing with high end blooms, along with highlighting color trends for this year, including neutral tones, blush and white, traditional palettes and looks inspired by Very Perry. As mentioned in the email that we sent out this morning, for the best viewing experience, please join us on Facebook or YouTube. Instagrammers, everyone that's live over there, I'm talking to you. So if you can head on over to Facebook or YouTube, that would be great. If not, you might just miss out at something like because on the sides, right? Because we're shooting horizontally and Instagram is vertical. So I don't want you guys to miss out on anything. Uh, also wanted to briefly mention, because everyone asks, no matter how many times I say it, but we will have replays. We have replays of everything that we do live. Um, so those will be available immediately on Facebook and YouTube, and we'll be uploading to Instagram probably tomorrow. And everything will be all together in one neat little package on our blog for you guys. Uh, so say hello. Let us know where you're from. I hope, let me know if you watched our first segment with David. Let me know what you're thinking about that. Uh, we went over a whole lot of information. Um, we answered a whole lot of questions. I didn't even get to all of the questions. And we will answer those on the blog too. David has all of those in our show notes that we use for the show. So I just wanted to thank you guys for all of that. Because that like made me so super happy. I felt like our first segment went really, really well. Um, and speaking of asking questions, uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that we are giving away one box of Japanese flowers to one lucky live viewer during Amy's live. We're doing one box per segment today. So a total of three boxes. So just be sure to engage, participate, ask questions, and I will be selecting one lucky person after we wrap up. Um, I will DM everyone after I'm done with the shows today and good luck. Uh, also wanted to make sure that you know about our Japanese flower farming blog series that went up this morning. I shared the link um, during David's session, but I'm going to share it with you guys here too. That It just gives you more information and kind of behind the scenes videos and photos. I'm laughing because Amy's getting pumped up. I see her. She's pumped up, guys. Um, this blog, though, gives you all the behind the scenes information about Japanese flower farming um, for a lot of our main products. Um, so we did a, a segment for each of the top ones and it's really informative. I hope you check it out after this live. Who is ready to get started, guys? I am, I am. I know Amy is. Hey, girl. Hi, guys. I'm, I'm like, I'm like getting my jitters out. I'm feeling like a little, the buzz. The buzz of excitement is here. Oh, totally. I I never, I like, cause you are live all the time. I am live, I feel like all the time lately. Um, and so it's not been a big deal, but for today, it was like, it's a little bit different. So I'm definitely feeling it. Like I got goosebumps and um, it's chilly, which doesn't help in Florida. It's a little chilly. I'm not going to complain compared to what you guys are all experiencing in the rest of the world. Um, but you know, South Florida, it was like, you know, in the forties this morning and that's, that's pretty chilly. Yeah. That's, that's actually, that's, being a Californian, if it did originally, if it dipped like under 50, it was like Ugg boots and like full down, like, <laughs> yes, we we're pretty soft for the, in the warmer region sometimes. <laughs> yes, um, exactly. We definitely, well, I, have my, I have a sweater dress on today. I'm comfy. I'm agile. I'm flexible. I'm ready. <laughs> cute. Uh, and I'm warm. So yeah, I love it. Yay. Cozy and cute. Can't yeah. beat that. Right. So Amy, can you just introduce yourself oh. real quick for everyone who may not know you? Yes. Let me try to turn up my volume here. Thanks for <laughs> can you hear me oh good? there we go yep is that better okay that's better we'll see what so, you sound like from over there yeah is this is this okay that's better yeah let me know if it's good if, if i if i can yell i'm in my own house i can yell <laughs> okay awesome <laughs> i'm sorry what was your question um can you introduce yourself real quick oh yes of course yes so i am amy bolsters my business is called the floral coach i have been 
in the floral industry for 20 years. And I am a classically trained designer who spent a lot of years in retail and in the special events industry. I ran my own studio for many years. And about four years ago, I pivoted to uh, teaching and training florists. So I teach and train florists all over the country. I have online workshops. I do hands-on workshops and I work with teams as well. And I do team training and really focused on design training. So designing artful, lush, airy styling is sort of my specialty. And um, that's really what I'm really passionate about. And I'm also really passionate about foundational floristry and working really efficiently and profitably. For many years in my business, I lost money because I you know, didn't price properly. I bought emotionally, I overstuffed arrangements, and I really um, am passionate about helping florists design more confidently in a way that helps them stay profitable. Because I think that's so important and uh, difficult to maintain when we're buying these all these beautiful things. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. And I am really honored and excited to be here. Japanese product is the caviar of our industry. And it is um, just been a high for three days having it in my studio and touching it and working with it. And I'm so excited to show you guys everything I've made. So yeah, I'm glad to be here. I love it, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you as a part of this event. Um, you're kind of one of the big reasons why this is happening. I like threw it out there and you were like on board right away and had all these ideas and even about bringing Amanda on board. So this is, I'm really excited about today. Um, so guys, go ahead and post your questions in the comments. I'll see them on Facebook and YouTube. I have my team up on Instagram Live. A reminder, Instagram Livers, uh, the best viewing experience is over on YouTube and Facebook. So go ahead and hop on over there if you can. Um, and let's get started. So we're kicking it off by talking about wedding trend colors. Amy, yes. what do you have to share with us today? Yes. So there's been two kind of major trends that have come out. I mean, there's multiple trends that are coming out. But based on the flor recent Florist Review, if you guys don't follow Florist Review, it's a great floral publication. It's been around, I think, 125 years. I think they just celebrated. Um, and they have a, a great um, article. You can actually just Google it and read all about the trends online. So you can see some of the trends that they're seeing on a global level and even within the United States. Um, and what they're seeing is a lot of still this neutral trend, right? Very tonal, very lots of browns, lots of beiges. If it hasn't hit your part of the country yet, it probably will in the next few years. Obviously, the dried is, I think, probably contributed to these sort of desaturated tones. And so we're going to be looking at some of those and how to talk about them, how to use them. Um, and also, blush is still important, right? Blush is just always going to be... Uh, sort of associated with bridal. And what I want to show you, though, is, is obviously some incredible blush product. Not all of it is Japanese. I had Japanese flowers were sent to me through Mayish, but Mayish also sent me some other products so that I could make several designs because the Japanese product is fairly limited in terms of variety. There's a lot of different types of sweet pea, but I wanted to showcase how to make a lot of different types of things. So what you're going to see isn't all Japanese, but it's all Mayish product. Um, and I want to just show you a little bit of how, how to like think about this blush trend a little bit in terms of like how to add neutrals to that and not like this high contrast white and light pink. So we're going to look at that in some container selections I chose and, and some of the more neutral flowers. And then lastly, Pantone just came out with their color called Very Perry. I know it's a little controversial for some of us <laughs> because there's <laughs> not that many like bluish periwinkle flowers. There, there really aren't. And that's okay. The, the Pantone color doesn't need to necessarily determine what we sell or how we design, but I think that it is important to know what is being talked about, what are trends in interior design, in fashion. Uh, the floral industry is, you know, we, we're not just out here on our own, right? There's a reason these trends get decided. They do end up impacting what brides want and see in their bridesmaids dresses. So, you know, even at Anthropology, there's there's companies that are uh, determining these trends and they trickle down into the floral industry. And so having some kind of awareness about that and also being ahead of the trend. If you are in a competitive area, if you're putting out 
product that's on trend with what somebody's buying in anthropology, you are a little bit more, you know, ahead of the curve. So we're just going to do a little bit with Barry Perry today. I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about really these lavender sweet pea and the lavender lysianthus that I got sent literally like has blown my mind <laughs> into a million pieces. So um, we're going to just talk a little bit about that. So, awesome. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I hope that you guys are excited because I'm excited. I'm excited. Yay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm ready. We jump in. Okay. Yeah. So, um, we're going to get started with something super simple, super basic, which is a wrist corsage. But, um, I wanted to include this because, um, you know, wearable flowers are still, you know, a, a big part of the wedding industry. And I am, uh, you know, my good friend, uh, Susan McCleary, Passion Flower Sue, she is the queen of all wearable flowers. Um, but I want to give you just a quick little, little, idea here with something that uh, actually came from Japan. So uh, David mentioned this incredible Tweedia. I have rarely seen Tweedia this large. Uh, the stem length alone is very, uh, very Japanese <laughs> because one of the distinct things about Japanese flowers is their stem length. And um, I hate to, to cut it down. I did use it in several pieces today, but the flower heads are so big and they're so sturdy that I wanted to show you how that you could incorporate this into a really pretty little wrist corsage. So I wanna show you some mechanics. I'm gonna come up a little closer just so you can see this. You can buy these brass cuffs online. Um, you can find them at Jan's Jewels. Passion Flower Sue really has all the resources for this. So I would head to her website. But what I, what I wanna show you is how fast this can come together. Um, by purchasing like an already made cuff, you can all, you can make your own too with Oasis flat wire, aluminum flat wire. You can actually make your own. Um, so if you get in a pinch or there's a supply chain issue, just make your own. Um, but I take a little piece of felt, cut it into a little oval, and I'm just using Oasis floral glue. I know this stuff is like gold. I still have some, sorry. Um, I just put put this on with Oasis floral glue. I let it dry. And then what I what I wanted to do was leave the mechanics exposed here. So the very quick and easy way to build this is to lay a couple of leaves if you're using greenery down first on either side. Okay. And I work at a diagonal. I think that this kind of asymmetry just looks looks better typically. So I placed a bud down first. And then what I would do is after I did the other side, then I would place my most dominant flower that helps kind of cover the mechanics. Do you see that? Yeah. And then after that step, then I come in with my little filler. And what I would do is take this little tiny bit of Tweedia. Now Tweedia seeps latex. So it's really important that you seal the bottom with a little bit of cold glue. And I come into the design at an angle, and what this does is it co still covers my mechanics, but it also adds another color and another texture to the design. So this is, these come together in minutes. This is a very, very, very fast, efficient way to make uh, corsage work in just purchasing the cuff. Yeah, and latex can ooze. Um, it, it can get very sticky, but if you seal the bottom, it will prevent it. You can also sear it with flame, but I wouldn't bother with that. The Oasis cold glue is uh, is really going to seal it so that it does not seep out. And it's also going to help keep it hydrated for something like a corsage. When you're done with these, put them in a plastic bag, a Tupperware, spray them really well with water, paper towels. They will last. Even hellebore. Um, I have had, as long as the hellebore is cut at a good stage and it's sturdy, um, th they'll last a week. So these can be made well in advance. They have a beautiful look to them. They can be very profitable for your business, um, but you you want to build them in that layered technique. And I use a little leftover toilet paper roll to hold them in place um, while I'm building them like this. So I can line them all up and I just go down the row, bup, 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 and you're good to go. Cool. That so, is brilliant. Yay. Okay. Paper towel rolls, guys. Save your paper towel roll. Yeah. <laughs> Flores are truly some of the most, um, you know, they're just some of the, the most interesting people that, you know, they just are able to kind of make good. Yes. Passion Flowers has so many great uh, recommendations. So definitely check her out more for more personal support. Um, yes. But we can move on to bouquets if you're ready. I am ready. Yeah. We can't talk about wedding flowers without talking in about bouquets. So I can't see, I can't wait to see what you have to share with us. Awesome. Okay, cool. So um, I made one, two, three, four, five bouquets. <laughs> nice. 
because I had so much product and I wanted to show you uh, a couple of different inspiration from, from using this product. So one of the things that um, I think is really obviously unique about Japanese product is again, stem length. So, so maximizing stem length, using it high as a floater line in a design. Um, I did, we'll show you some designs later where I actually tucked them deep. I broke one stem down and I tucked them low. Um, because I have like hundreds of stems of them here um, for this demo, but really in a bouquet, um, the trend is moving towards, you know, lighter and airier bouquets. And this is my specialty. This is what I teach. This is what I spend a lot of time talking about uh, because this style of design was very difficult for me for many years. It made me sort of question like, am I a good designer? <laughs> and it really baffled me. And I spent a lot of years figuring it out. And I, and now that's why I teach it. But this is a becoming more of a trend and i'm reading I, I follow all these floral publications and even our floral publications are saying you know saf's recent floral management publication just this month said this trend is not going away it's only growing and so if it's something that you know you're struggling with using a lighter airier flower like a sweet pea to float above other flowers it's going to give you those layers um with the the key to this design style is about building layers. It's about having flowers deeper in design, terracing those lines and building up and out. And so having these floaters, you know, one of the most devastating things to me is seeing a flower like a, a sweet pea, especially a Japanese sweet, buried so deep in a design. It's like you've completely lost the whole point of the form of that. You want these flowers to float. You're paying for them. You're paying to see all parts of it. Don't spend 225 on a flower and shove it all the way down here in the handle, right? It needs to be up above, seen, smelled, all the things. So this is a very simple, just monochromatic bouquet. Monochromatic is another big trend that is being reported. So obviously this is a little bit of a take on very peri. This is a little bit more of a blue violet. Very peri is a more red violet, but this is what I had to work with. And so I wanna show you, it's possible to just make do with what we have. The base of this bouquet is stock, right? Stock is an inexpensive flower. So I was able to get kind of the meat of the bouquet built at the base with a more inexpensive flower. The next layer is some lilac. When it's in season, it isn't terribly expensive, especially if you can maybe get it local, but lilac is you know, a perfect texture to sort of break up some of the other light lavenders that we have in here. And then I floated a lot of light pink sweet pea above and a, just a handful of these lavender scabiosa. So there's some repetition in the color of the scabiosa with the color of the stock. So what I'm always looking for in a design is how to create a little bit of repetition from what is there. This can really just be a little bridesmaid. This can be a bride. Obviously, I put a lot of Japanese sweet pea in here because I had them, so that's going to up the price. But because they add so much movement above a design, it really adds value. So this is something that maybe if you can't afford 15 stems, maybe you add three, right? But again, float them up. Somebody asked what to do with the stem is short. I, I would put them just on the perimeter of the bouquet to create a little line. I'll show you here. So if you have a sweet pea, you want to grab me a lavender sweet pea? My lovely assistant to show me a friend mm -hmm. is here. So this is obviously a Japanese sweet pea. I mean, how do I cat call this? I can't whistle. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I do that because I can't yeah. whistle either. <laughs> yeah. So my friend Shelby is here. We were looking at one of the bouquets and she was like, that is so beautiful. And I said, I want to marry this bouquet. <laughs> we want to marry these flowers. So if you, right, look at, I mean, this is Japanese stuff. This is the caviar, right? This is not your everyday sweet pea. So this is why they cost a lot more. But if you have a stem, right, and you lay it into your bouquet and you want to get a lot of height and a cascade, boom. You, and I built a cascade for you guys. So you're going to see how the sweet pea help add that length down. I mean, it really makes a difference. If your sweet pea is shorter, then I would just come down a bit. The, the key is still floating, right? Um, I've never seen a short Japanese sweet pea. They don't have that problem if you have the Japanese stuff. <laughs> okay, I'll right. move on. We, we, did, we did have a couple questions about yeah. like if they don't get the Japanese right and it is short like do you recommend how do you recommend using a short stem then to float a flower well I would use something else yeah. <laughs> there you, you go 
very short stem, it's not a floater flower. It's mm -hmm. use it as a base. And I'll, I'll show you in a little bit of the, some centerpiece work here that use it, utilizes. Because what I do is look at my stem length. Shorter stems, I'm going to already use shorter in design. If they have long stem length, I'm going to save that long stem because stem length is money, right? It takes longer to grow a stem long. In a design to get height, I need a long stem. So I'm not going to chop one of my Japanese sweet pea down first if I already have short stems. I'm looking at my material and I'm organizing stem height based on what I, what purpose it needs to, to fulfill for me. So doing this kind of measuring is, is your job as a designer to figure out it's a big puzzle. I have to piece all these things together. Um, but yeah, we're already at 25 minutes and I have so much to show you. So do you mind if I move on and we can maybe circle back? Yep. Of course. Okay, that would be so great because there's so much I want to, to have for you and I hate to run out of time. Okay, so here's another layer to, to Very Perry. So I took Very Perry. I took our, read look at these Lysianthus, you guys. Don't you want to die? <laughs> I oh, want to gorgeous. die. I want to die. Um, and I took these incredible Charlotte Ranunculus that feel, I mean, I'll be honest, I, I felt indulgent making this. I, I almost had this sense of like, <laughs> I don't even just I don't deserve to be in this presence of this. Like it's ridiculous the the how beautiful this stuff is. But what I want to show you is how to take a lavender and layer more color on top of it. So you are going to see more color this year. Jewel tones are in. They are going to be still a very present thing. I think we want color. I think we're all craving it. I think it's we're all just like worn down. And I think that people want to feel happy and. I think we're going to see the nude tone still be very present. The boho thing's not going away, um, tone on tone. But I think people want bright, beautiful things in their life. So um, these, uh, what I want to get really close to is, is this sweet pea right here. This incredible sweet pea. I mean, you just, you don't need that much of it, right? This is the thing. Obviously, th this is like um, money, 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 money. But having one or two of something in your bouquets. So say you buy a 10 stem bunch of something. And even if you put one stem in the bridesmaids and you put three stems in a bride, that one flower is the, so big and so incredible. It's the star of the show. And then build your whole palette around it. The darkness of the center of this is building repetition with the darkness of the Cosmo. Everything in this bouquet is Japanese. So this is, you know, again, a pretty expensive bouquet, but I wanted to show you something luxe and amazing and juicy. Cool? Okay. Mm, I love it. Yeah. This is the one that Shelby and I want to marry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next thing I want to show you is um, the Cascade. So Cascades are back. Um, and I, you know, I've been a florist a long time. I feel like, you know, we think of cascades and we think, and no, please don't take offense if you're like, I make those every week. But there's like this idea in our head sometimes of like those bright fuchsia dendrobium orchids that are like narrowed down with like big Casablanca lilies, right? If you have that <laughs> bias, you can make amazing, beautiful, modern garden style cascades in your hand using the spiral technique, which is what I teach. So you don't need a waste this bouquet holder as there is one rubber band holding this together. And this is a little bit more of a tailored look, but it's got some really nice movement and shape, very airy. Um, what's Japanese in here is the Spirea, all these sweet pea, the um, Tweedia, and these Cymbidium orchids. So I'm gonna show you here in the demo I do next um, how to do this. I made this bouquet, this is not a braggy moment. This is really about technique. I made this bouquet um, in about 15 minutes from start to finish. I mean, I had to clean up. Wow. But this is very possible when your product, when you know what shapes and sizes you need, and when the product is so good, it sort of designs itself. You're not fussing with a lot of it. I mean, come on. <laughs> like this, yes, I think I'm a skilled designer, but the product is what makes, um, sometimes the designs come together very fast. So think about, you know, how much is your time worth? If you have to wire every single ranunculus, if you have to wire every single thing, um, I didn't have to bother because these ranunculus are so 
sturdy and strong they just went right in so like these are the, i get that it's expensive product like i don't live in a fantasy i see things online and i'm like that's a 700 dollars arrangement like i could never afford that so i get that there's a component here that i'm showing expensive things but i think as a designer who who used Japanese product for many years, it's really about using it strategically, right? Not all of us have $20,000 weddings. You might have a $4,000 wedding that you can afford two or three bunches of Japanese product that's really going to elevate your work, set you apart. People are going to freak out over it because who has seen a Charlotte ranunculus in their life? I mean, Shelby's, you know, my friend here, she's never seen one of those. She's just like, cry, you know, we're like, oh my God. This is this. <laughs> that really sets you apart in a lot of ways. So this is some one of those ways I'm not trying to pitch like, yeah, just put 40 stems of Japanese. I get that that's not like reality. Okay. I yes. Will... While you're Go switching ahead. out, someone was saying, is this as expensive as the last bouquet? And I would say no, since there isn't as much no. Japanese. Yeah. The other one was is all Japanese. It's way more. Right. And I was like, I think I, I don't know how much, I think I got one bunch of Cosmos, which was a huge bunch. The other thing is the bunch sizes are so big and the blooms are so big. So I loved what David said about bloom head size because you get your money's worth. Like you really, really do. Okay. I feel like time is just passing. It's so quick, right? Okay. <laughs> so I want to talk about the Cymbidium. I was actually excited to see David emailed me a couple of, uh, maybe a week ago. And he uh, said, hey, uh, we have some videos. Do you want some? And I said, oh, my gosh, yes, because I actually use them in bouquets a lot. Um, and I want to show you very quickly, if I have the time, um, how to utilize this. You might look at this and be like, that's maybe for a hotel installation. What do I do with this in a wedding? And I want to show you. So this is one stem. This is like, re re I mean, look at that. It's ridiculous. Will you also grab, I'm going to hand that to you, Shelly. Will you grab a couple other colors just to show them? So the first thing I'm going to do, maybe, yeah, like a yellow. The first thing I'm going to do with this Cymbidium orchid is I'm going to remove the lower stems. Here's just a couple other colors and stems that they came. Look how beautiful these are, you guys. Aren't those crazy? Gorgeous. Hi. Crazy, crazy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove about the bottom two thirds. Okay, I'm just going to take the blooms off. And then I can actually stick these in water. Now, the reason why I do that is I'm going to then... Oh, I was like, I, have, I was all organized. Where's my stuff? Okay. I'm going to take a wire, 18 to 20 gauge wire. I'm going to wire this bad boy and I'm going to show you how to pop it into a bouquet. Um, Cymbidiums are hardier than your traditional phalaenopsis, easier to wire than a dendrobium, and they're big. It's a big fat form flower. So it's really going to be this beautiful moment in a bouquet. Um, what you want to do is hydrate it. But, but here's what I want to tell you. The reason I keep the tops here is look, boom, the beginning of a bouquet right here right? I can actually use the stems here on and they're hydrated and just use the tops. And then I take all my wire blooms and I'll show you in a second and build a bouquet with other flowers with these stems. I could put this in a centerpiece, right? I could chop it here. Boom. Centerpiece, large scale arrangement. Boom. Right? So this maximizes your use of the stem length. Remember stem length is where our money is at. So we want to keep that uh stem length preserved and maximize its usage this is how real quick i'll show you how to do this 18 to 20 gauge wire i think these are 19 gauge i'm just going to come straight through the stem here and you can do a cross you can do cross wire you can go across i find that this wire is thick enough to to handle it so this is a hairpin method i'm just going to pull the legs down oops I'll show you here okay so you see a little hairpin through there I'm taking some floral tape and I like to wire these at different heights. I like to have some really, really long because I'm about to show you a bouquet I made. I <laughs> can't watching, wait. While watching Netflix last night. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's like, we got to bed now. I'm like, I have to make this bouquet. It's so <laughs> I have made an all wired bouquet in years because I've just been using my spiral hand tie method for a long time. And, you know, wiring a bouquet is incredibly time consuming. So, um, okay. So here's what you do. Boom. It's wired. It's got this nice strong stem. Ladies in a big Tupperware or uh, I'm old school. I just use a bucket and I literally just take a trash bag over the top of it. Like literally spray it really well inside. I tuck the sides of that trash bag underneath creates a hydration chamber. I leave them out of the cooler and the water just gets deep into the petals of that. Okay. So when it's ready to design, these guys are ready to go. So 
three days ago, I made all these. I, I wired them all. Let me show you what I made. And I just had them literally sitting out in my studio. Isn't this so fun? <laughs> oh my God, that's beautiful. Isn't it crazy? So all I did was take a ton of cymbidiums off the bottom of these stems and just watched Netflix and had a blast building this this all wired hand tied cascade. Now you can obviously just use I kind of just had fun with this, but you can use um, these individuals in your personals work, use them in boutonnieres, corsages, put them in bouquets. So even if you bought one stock at whatever price, you can maximize do you see how you can really stretch it you're not just putting one stem of orchid in something who you know unless you have a huge corporate account or like a really big budget wedding that's not realistic but um how amazing would this be for a photo shoot i mean there's i'm gonna have some fun uh photographing this it does it looks fake it's amazing it does it doesn't have everyone's to going bananas yay i mean it doesn't have to be tropical right i could layer in here um, ranunculus, you know, kind of muddy, or excuse me, um, the, the crazy, beautiful Lysianthus, right? I could put in other things. I'm just shoving handfuls of things, but do you see the color, how it shifts the color? Yeah. So we can muddy it up a bit. We can bring it more bridal. We can make it more tonal. It doesn't have to feel like a wedding. Okay. Shelby told me 15 minutes. I'm back on track. Okay. I'm setting that down. <laughs> um, people want to know if you'll yeah. be able to share the pictures of the orchid bouquet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Totally. So we just bought a new camera. I'm very excited. I have been holding off on a new camera for a long time. So we are going to experiment. We're going to get pictures of everything I made and we will share them. We'll tag Mayish and everything. It'll be great. Um, awesome. Okay. One, I got one, one, one more bouquet. Let me have a sip of my OJ here. I'm a little. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip too. Yes. <clears throat> get my throat back on track. Okay, one more bouquet. I know you guys, I'm a junkie for, I'm a bouquet junkie, if that's a thing. I have a bouquet problem. Uh, it's like cowbell, like more cowbell. I need more bouquets, more bouquets. Um, at some point, my husband's like, I think, I think you've made enough. Like, I think they need to see something else. <laughs> okay, this is the last palette. So this is kind of like um, your pink, like modern, modern pink, right? We are bringing in taupes, nudes, all of those beautiful Japanese sweet peas. So let me tell you what's Japanese in here. So these light brown Japanese flowers are basically like, to me, the perfect flower. They are the perfect color. Um, I believe that they are the perfect bridge tone. I have used this exact sweet pea in white palettes, green palettes, lavender, um, pinks, obviously. They work with blue even. They are the perfect bridge tone. And the reason why, and I just learned this from the almighty Hitomi Gilliam, is that brown contains all colors. When you think about muddying up paint, right? It, this was game changing for me to hear this. I thought, that's why I'm so obsessed with brown, is that it, it acts as the perfect bridge because it works with so many different colors. This flower can be challenging to find because it's very in very, very high demand. So you need to have a plan. I would not promise this to anyone, truly, because I have seen this. Um, you guys probably have it, Mayish, but I have had issues getting brown flowers the last couple of years because they're so trendy. Um, yep. Anything that's trending can be hard to get. It's just a supply demand. And then you throw in logistics. It's, it's yeah. Yes, yes. So what I want to show you is, again, there's no wasted product. There's no product shoved down here in the handle. This is the beauty of the using the spiral technique. There's no fussy mechanics. This is literally one rubber band and a little piece of tape around this holding all this together. It's very secure. But see, we can get this really floaty, bouncy effect. The bouquet was was pretty as is. The, the trick to these bouquets is building low to out. You want to layer <laughs> um, your material. But what the, what, why I made this in, this one came together in like maybe seven or eight minutes. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. The reason why is I build the center of the bouquet and I extend the lines on the outside with sweet pea. And the minute I put these Japanese sweet pea on the outside, done. <laughs> She's done. And, and that's really the power of, again, you're, you're paying for the product, but it can come together very quickly. I know I'm almost out of time. I do want to show you. I have so much more to show you. So I'll try. I know. To... You're, you're okay. You're okay. 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 
Take I'm a like, breath. What? Real quick, do you do you remember, do you recall the name of the variety of that sweet pea that you were talking about? That I can look at I don't know the name of it. I yeah. always called it light brown. I know David, if he's here, hopefully he's here, he can tell us. It's in my email and I need to uh, look it up because there are varying colors. Shelby, will you grab one from out of the chart? We have we lost a few that are darker and I'll show you. I, she tossed them because the color just got kind of funky uh, or the uh, petal got funky. Oh, I have it, Never mind. Oh, this one right here. Let me show you guys because this is different. You want to pay attention to this with Lysianthus. There can be a lot of different colors of gold or brown or purple Lysianthus. You want to make sure you get the variety name right. Send a photo to your rep. Notice that this is a different color. Okay, let me show you. Notice how orange this is, right? This is more of a taupe. See, that's a that's going to create a very different color in a bouquet for you. If you just say brown sweet pea and you wanted the one I showed you and you get this, this can shift a palette because this is very orange, very, very orange. It's beautiful, but that can be problematic. So keep in mind that I always, with, with wholesale reps, when I have something specific in mind, I try to send a, a photo. I try to collect a photo of that. So that would be, um, that's something that to keep in mind. Notice that um, with Lysianthus, <laughs> One of the things about Japanese product like David was showing is just the absolute sheer stem head, stem head and blank length. So what I want to demo for you, what I want you to really notice and see and acknowledge here is that I can separate this, right? I always separate my Lysianthus, almost always, unless it's a tiny little bloom like that. This is what normal kind of Lysianthus looks like, which is fine. It's beautiful. I removed all the foliage. I removed the buds. I want to keep my color story really um, specific. And a lot of times the buds can throw a palette off because they're lime green. So because I now have two separate stems, I want to show you how I can lay this into my bouquet and be able to very quickly and easily add a lot of mass and a lot of color and really build um, just an incredible color story. So because you have this stem length, this is a three three prong one here. I'm gonna break them apart. They're long enough to come right into the bouquet and still be in water here. Do we see that? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. So that's another really really important thing to acknowledge about. That's unique about Japanese product is that because of that stem length, you're able to maneuver your material around in a design much more easily than say a standard lysianthus head. Okay. So um, I'm just going to tie this off. I love using Oasis Bind It Tape. It's waterproof, and it just holds everything together beautifully. I'll give this a little trim. Shelby's reaching for it. She's like, wrap it up, lady. Okay, move on. I told her to yell at me so I don't go on and on and on. Okay. <laughs> what Yvonne, Yvonne knows a little too well. We've been on enough podcast interviews that I'm like, and then once when I was a child. But no, it's all good information. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be like, okay, we need to move on, Amy. Yeah. I don't always interrupt you. Like one time we talked social media for an hour and a half, but it was all, yeah, two hours. We were online for two hours, but it was all really good stuff. So if it's good, I don't mind. If it's good, we'll just keep the party rolling, right? We'll keep the party <laughs> Uh, but you guys are in it for such a treat with Amanda. She's, I think, one of the most talented designers working right now in the industry, and she's uh, so incredible. So I'm really excited to see her presentation also. So, okay. Um, we are shifting to centerpieces. Can you believe it? We made it. We're here in the home stretch. Um, and again, this is sort of one of these, like, this is an incredibly expensive arrangement, but this is about showing you the product and what's possible. Um, this sort of jewel tone, again, it's just a little bit monochromatic. I'd say it's a little touch of analogous. It's got reds and violets in it. Um, but so I, I got half of this product um, came from Mayesh as just the tulips and the standard ranunculus, which is beautiful. When I saw this color, though, I immediately went over to the Japanese product. You can see that this same red violet is going to pick up the red violet here. And because there's a white a bicolor to this, floating them high, bringing them in helps break up all this dark color. And so having something like this is uh, would be a very juicy, expensive arrangement. But you can see the Charlottes in there. Um, this is just a very simple, inexpensive accent decor bowl. Um, I know that there's a container shortage, and I want to just briefly mention that, that um, I don't think that's going to go away. I think containers will continue to be sparse and expensive. And I think that um, I'm going to show you some, some ideas, but I'm 
really focused on the color of the container, the color and the shape. I am, don't get too fussy about this because at the end of the day, this is really the start of the show when you're making kind of a, a lush, abundant arrangement. If you're making a more minimalistic arrangement, the container is such an important piece of the composition. Um, and I really uh, will demonstrate a little bit more of that here in just a few minutes. This is just a chicken wire base. Um, I don't use personally use Oasis. I do I do have some um, agrofoam, um, not agrofoam, um, my brain just went blank on me, but I have the alternative foam um, in some of my pieces. This is, when you have a vessel with water, you do not need um, foam, in my opinion. I know delivery can be a pain, but notice that this vase uh, curves back in, so it really does help keep um, the flowers and the water in there. You can also use curly wire if you don't want to use, um, you know, something else or, or tape grid. There's so many options. Okay, we're moving on. Agrawal, thank you. I'm like, Agra something? <laughs> Agrawal. This is an agrawal. Compotes aren't going away anywhere. This is also a little accent decor, fitted vessel. Um, you know, if you came up around Martha Stewart years, if you've been doing this a long time like me, you know, you've heard the same saying, like, make a fist on the table. But the flowers can't go over this. I don't agree. I think having a couple of really dramatic uh, flyers up here is a really amazing way to build drama and highs and lows in a tablescape. It doesn't mean that I'm building this like wall of flowers, but having a few creates really dramatic negative space, which is also a trend. We're seeing more of an embra embracing around minimalism and modernism and negative space. So don't be afraid to sell these styles of designs. I think more and more people um, are embracing them. And this is like Amanda's specialty. So um, she's gonna, she's gonna nail, knock it out of the park. This is a very simple design, really with just a couple components. What's Japanese in here are really just the Lysianthus. But I wanted to show you that with Aussie bells and um, some just about five stems, six stems of amnesia roses, maybe seven stems, and then using the, the Lysianthus in these really specific patches, um, this would be beautiful on a table with just some candles and a few even maybe small satellite pieces. And it's not like 80 stems of product, right? So um, that's just a simple way to, to bring in some movement and some shape and do something a little bit more contemporary. Okay. I feel like I'm talking so fast, but my time's almost up. So we're moving quickly here. You're okay. doing good. And, and yeah. we're getting more questions, but I'm also answering them in the comments and David's answering. So we're, we're good. Go, go team. Okay, this is a really cool little satellite piece I made. Again, this is just a really fun way to bring in negative space and showcase your product. This, again, a design like this is going to showcase the line of the sweet pea. When I think about Japanese product, I immediately think of sweet pea because that's probably the thing I buy the most in terms of like the Japanese repertoire. The stem length, the colors, the hardiness. I've literally had um, a brown Japanese sweet pea bunch last me uh, four weeks. I've had it last me four weeks. I, I could not even believe it. And I have a cooler. I have a professional floral cooler. And it was in and out of the cooler. I've been working on a project with it. I, I literally could not believe how long it lasted. So I buy these for the longevity for the stem length. So instead of shoving them all low, I want to make something that showcases the line, showcases the flowers. This has a stock base. So again, more inexpensive flower, Pit really deep and low on a couple of these um, Lysianthus. Um, and what this is, is a pasta dish from Crate and Barrel. And I've had this forever. It's just a ceramic pasta dish. I have several dishes in my in my vase section. So this is um, not an easy arrangement to transport. I know transporting is difficult. What I recommend if you're going to make something like this, this is in a large pin frog with this really pretty little satellite piece, is that if you can't make the stuff on site, make the lower components um, and the deep part of the arrangement and pack it that way. When you get on site, add the high points and add the extensions, right? Those are the parts that are difficult to travel with. They get banged up, these fall over, but the beef, the meat of the design can travel fine as long as your stems are anchored into your mechanic, whether you're using a flower frog or so forth. So um, pasta dish, right? Cereal bowl. Um, this is a little uh, like soy sauce dish from the same collection. 
um, they are more expensive than buying wholesale because you're buying them retail. But I have used them over and over and over for years. And so I do, um, you know, we're going to have to look outside of our regular wholesalers sometimes when we can't find what we need. Go to garden centers, go to Crate and Barrel, go to West Elm, go to Target. Um, you know, I, I hate to support these big box stores when I want to support amazing companies like Accent Decor, whom I love and I love their products. But if I need something and I can't find it, um, then I need to go find it for my clients, right? So um, this is just an example of something that you can do really showcasing the product in a more minimalistic way. Then you're not necessarily using 40 garden roses or all this other stuff. I don't, I barely use any roses in this whole presentation. So um, not to bash my rose friends, but you know, the, you don't need it when you have all this crazy stuff, beautiful stuff. Okay, back to pasta dishes. <laughs> I love that you are using pasta dishes. Yes. It's great. Okay. I have had this pasta dish for so long, you guys. It's from Crate and Barrel. It was, I think, $12.99. Look at the speckle. Look at the texture on it. Isn't that beautiful? It has sort of a brown uh, texture. And I wanted to just show a little tableau. I know I'm like running out of time here, but I want to show you just a little tableau of, again, a way to really maximize in a more minimalistic, simplistic way. So when you have a dish, a large open dish, we want to embrace the negative space. My goal isn't to just use this like a compote and pack it full. I'm using the negative space as a component of the design. These are Nari lilies. These are beautiful Cluny ranunculus. Obviously, they're massive. They're huge. They're difficult to work with because they're so flat. And so I angled them at different ways to help draw your eye up through this linear style design. And then I took a bunch of very small dishes. Again, cereal bowl, Target. <laughs> Um, there and then little vases, old vases from Accent, but I went with color, right? So I can make this little tableau of these little pieces. I have like a little bit of a more minimalist piece here. I have this really beefy, meaty, <laughs> sweet pea heaven um, piece here that could be maybe just the more dominant piece, right? And then I could pepper in some really simple, these all just have a little pin frog in the bottom. Um, you can ball up a very small piece of clay so you can actually repurpose the frogs and move them around. Um, when you don't have a ton of product in there, it's not real heavy what you're trying to make, you can move your frogs. If they're anchored in a dish like this, they live there. I mean, good luck trying to get them out. I've, I've tried, I've, I've literally um, busted my finger bad uh, at a wedding trying to move a frog. Just be very careful, they're very sharp but they're really incredible. So this would be an amazing thing to showcase Japanese product, right? You're not putting 40 stems of garden roses, you're showcasing all this, the linear elements, the length of the material. Um, I wanted to take the time and add a bunch of stuff to this, we don't have time, but I wanna show you the orchids really quick before we move on to the last three pieces and then I will promise to go away. I have to show you guys these. This is what I wanted to add. Look at these orchids, you guys. Ah, oh, I almost dropped this. <laughs> so pretty. Aren't, aren't those beautiful? So I was going to take these, just a little bit more time, it was, it was ambitious, and add this really fun pop of color to all these pieces. Um, and I'll do it anyway and take a picture for you guys of what I end up doing. So don't worry, the, the show is not over. <laughs> I have too much good stuff to play with. So, uh, okay, last piece on the centerpiece, or actually two more pieces, and then we'll end with the last two big pieces. So this is a more traditional compost style. This is again from Accent Decor. I have a little piece of agarable in here, and I did use some roses in here, obviously, quicksands are the big thing. Um, I just taped a small piece of agarable in. It is not the same experience as working with Oasis. I highly recommend getting it in if you're gonna use it and practicing and playing with it. It does not puncture the same. It takes some, uh, some real practice, but the flowers have held up beautifully. This is um, a beautiful way to elevate the flowers off the table. It's still long and low. It's still a compote. I brought in deep layers and built outward. This is definitely the, the style of design I prefer and that I like and that I teach. Um, and I, I think it's just a really lovely way to bring nudes and pinks and neutrals into the modern trend. Okay, here is <laughs> the, the beast. <laughs> so you've seen this compote. It's been around, it's called Benoit by Accent Decor. This is a really common, um, piece and the reason I mean hello <laughs> like right here framed in the middle the reason I used it is because I had it and I didn't have another white compote and I wanted to make a classic white 
styling of all this white product. And so, you know, if you're sick of the Benoit, no offense accent, I've seen it for years, consider painting it, consider adding a finish to it, consider how you can repurpose it. And I think this is, again, a part of being, um, being resilient as a florist right now is that we have to get scrappy, we have to get smart, um, because everything costs more now. And we have to be really intentional about using what we have and being really diligent to make, to make it beautiful. Now, this helps when you have like hundreds of dollars worth of Japanese product in here. But again, these, I just had to go uh, full out. If any of you are watching Cheers, this is my full out. <laughs> it's beautiful. And I um, love, I love that, that yeah. vase too. It's like one of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's honestly does a great job. This would be a beautiful giant centerpiece in the middle of a huge round table. This would be a great entry piece. This could be a beautiful bar piece. Um, this is literally stuck to the brim with all Japanese product. This is all Japanese. We have Tweedia in here, white, um, or excuse me, there's, there are a few with white spray roses that are not. Other than that, it's all of these massive, um, white ranunculus if you can't get peonies right if you can't get uh white hydrangeas i mean i know these are probably more expensive than that but this, look at the size of this right i mean the from a size perspective if you need to swap it out for a uh larger mass focal bloom in a piece that you've promised someone buy japanese white ranunculus right this is um definitely so, uh, something that can replace something large that's really you know big so this is a biggie i know she's big but she's big bold and beautiful um okay moving on we have two more pieces yes i will take these beauties this is really just a showcase of these in a very simple vase i actually got this vase from target target really does have some incredible designers they work with and i think are very on trend with so many finishes and cover colors. I love this dark uh, sort of uh, tonal blue. Um, and I thought it worked as a beautiful contrast with the yellow of these. Um, I almost wept when I opened the box from David because Gloriosas are very special. And this is for a very special client. They are not cheap flowers, but um, you know, obviously for the sake of time, what I actually wanted to do was take these and wire them into a bouquet to show you how to use them in bouquet work with the lavender as a split, as a split complementary palette. It's a little bit of contrast. I, I didn't have time. I, I made so many things, but I just wanted to at least show them to you in a simple vase. This would be a remarkable statement piece on a bar. This would be a remarkable statement piece on the center of a very large um, food table entryway. Um, and really they designed themselves. I trimmed off some of the leaves that had browned. I cut them and put them in a nice vase. Done, right? Um, right? So that's a, they can kind of, they do the work for you. That's kind of the the, the piece here that I'm, I'm hoping you'd buy. Our very final piece, you've been all so patient as I've gone on and on and on. Uh, is no, this, this is amazing. I love it. It's like fast paced, yeah. showing lots of different things. Yes. I think this is amazing. Awesome. Well, this is another piece. This is, um, from Accent Decor, another Accent Decor piece. Um, a lot of these pieces are, I did a project with them recently on highlighting things that were in stock. So all these pieces I just showed you, I bought, I got from them in the last month. So they have a new feature. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not paid by them. I just, I'm just an Accent Decor fan. But I, if you log on to Accent, you can literally look up, um, like you can shop by what's available. So that's why I'm using them is because I had them and I just got them in like a month ago. Um, but what I wanted to show you too is that the gold of this vessel really picks up the gold of this um, Lysianthus. There's so much gold in this flower. I mean, you literally turn it on its backside, it's shimmering, it's like iridescent. So I'm looking again for repetition, right? The reason I chose this is it's picking up here and here and that's creating continuity. What's Japanese in here is the Spirea. I had a little bit left over. It has beautiful movement and shape. That Japanese, same bunch of Japanese spirea I used in a cascade bouquet, and I used it in a giant statement piece, right? This is about looking at your product and maximizing it, breaking it down for smaller things, keeping those tall stems for larger pieces. So I was able to maximize all of that stem length, and you need to do that when you're buying expensive product. So um, I layered in some carnations in here. They are a true favorite of mine. 
I tuck them sort of deep as a layer below. There's a few floating above, but there's a little bit of peachy apricot in these. And so they work. It's, it's a very sort of um, consistent design still. It doesn't look too high contrast. And then I had so many of these, I thought I'm going to make my dream arrangement and pack this thing with the most juicy, beautiful lisianthus. Now, the other thing you can do with Lysianthus is really actually force it open and sort of press open its little head. Not that you need to do that, but if you have a large statement piece, you can come through here and really force those Lysianthus open. You're almost reflexing them. They actually, they get so much bigger. You see that dark contrast center and you get even more bang for your buck. Cool? Did we get everything? Cool. cool. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Okay. So this it. is this is amazing. We I we have a bazillion questions. I am marking them in our show notes, which will go up on the blog, guys. So right. if we don't answer your questions, we I will try to make sure that they are in the blog recap for the event, just so you guys know. Um, but I feel like you answered a lot of the questions just naturally, anyhow. So hopefully that was good. There was a couple of questions about like. How do you adjust pricing for wedding pieces when you're using Japanese product or something that's very expensive? Um, you know, people asking kind of about that and like, how, you know, and then also like, how do you kind of um, portray that to your client, you know, kind of justifying like why you want to use these things. But I'm not sure if that's how you would go about that anyhow. So I'm just curious of yeah. what your thoughts are there. Um, I think that's a long, long answer. I think the really yes. short version of that, I mean, I know that no matter what talk we do, we're going to talk about pricing because the reality is as much as we all love flowers, if you're in this um, to, you know, make a living, we obviously have to manage our cost. And I think that this is, this is comes down to your ability to communicate value to a client. I don't think you need to talk about the fact, I think you can talk about the fact that these flowers are imported from Japan. I think the more you know about them, that adds expertise to the conversation, that creates safety between you and a client to say, oh, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. They're going to do the best job sourcing that I, you know, I'm in good hands. I'm going to get a good value for, um, you know, working with this person. I, I don't think what you need to do is, is beg people to use this product. I think you have to decide as the manager, as the CEO of your business, as the one who's ordering the product, how to take your budget and prioritize it. I think if it's the beginning of the year, so let's say you're a wedding professional and you are doing a present, you're doing a, um, you're submitting a proposal, right? You, sh you know, Japanese product comes on about now, right, in the last few weeks, and then it goes through to this time roughly. Generally speaking, from the last three years, a sweet pea costs about this much, a Japanese sweet pea. You're talking to a client, they want a cascade bouquet, you want to make it hand tucked, you don't want to do it all wired or foam, and you're like, you know, I really need that stem length. I'm not going to quote them, you know, $1.25 in, when I'm filling out my, my ordering sheet. I'm going to think to myself, I need some Japanese product. It's going to be in season. It's going to be in hopefully in stock. So I might need to charge another $15 to get three stems of something in here or two stems of something in here. Right? So this is work, right? This doesn't just happen like, Oh, everybody's just going to have your buy-in. They don't need to know where you're ordering, how much extra it's going to be. I don't think you're going to win somebody over by saying, well, if we use Japanese product, like they, I don't think people care that much. I think right. it's your job to sell, the look and the feel and the aesthetic and the vision and make sure that you're aligned with communicating what's important to them. That's why people, that's how you get people's buy-in. It's not about selling the story necessarily. I think that can help tell the story, but it's my job as a, a wedding professional to sit down with a client and understand what are their concerns, what are their fears and, and sell them in a way that connects them with in an aligned way. And I think the money part works itself out. I think you have to be honest and upfront. People bring you photos of things and you need to be able to say, this is a $20,000 arch you just showed me, right? And not him and haw about it, right? They need to know right out the gate when you start talking about the cost of what they're looking at. Utilizing carnations, utilizing stock, utilizing other less expensive flowers, lower in designs, layering more expensive product over them 
is a fantastic way to make something look more expensive than just using gobs and gobs of expensive product, which is what I just showed you. But the, the, this is a showcase, right, of expensive. Right. So my point is, is this, this is a complex thing. This is not just like check the box and everybody's going to ooh and ah and hand you over hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy Japanese product. I think you have to figure out how it fits into the weddings you're doing, where it's priority, where it's not, how to supplement and look really truly look at your flowers for the shape, the color and the size. I talk about this all the time, shape, color and size. When we can remove the bias of what we're looking at, we can really design in a more comprehensive way. We don't have a bias towards it. I don't know any designer who wouldn't want to use these flowers. I don't know a lot of designers that can make what I just made for an average wedding. There, it would be very expensive. So being able to maximize layering, building these color stories through shape, color, and size, and, and using this product in its most um, efficient way is, in my opinion, the best way to utilize it. It's a long answer, but that's no. what I got. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything that you did, Amy, for this showcase. It was frigging amazing, above and beyond what I was expecting. So thank you so much for your help. Thank you so much for spending the last hour with us. Thank you guys who are watching on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. I really appreciate you. Be sure to come on back in about 15 minutes for our next segment of our Japanese Flower Festival. We are wrapping up the day with Amanda Liu from Studio Mondine. She is going to be demoing a modern tabletop design and answering any questions that you may have. This is a little bit different than everything that we've done already because she pre-recorded her demo and then she'll be on live to answer the questions. So it's going to be fun. I'm so excited to share that with you guys and I will see you in a few. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye guys. Bye Amy. Bye guys.